yes, I would prefer that you not seize control of my situation. The fact is they keep trying to do it over and over and over again. And it's like this sheer battle of will against will to prevent that. So you can't really, I mean, you could blame her and you could not blame her. But for you, it's probably better to blame all men. Because, like, they do have a tendency to very easily feel that they have the right to simply walk in anywhere, seize control, seize all the whatever it is, and start barking out orders, right? Mm. I mean, it is a historical problem, and, I mean, I think the solution, obviously, it's all military tactical, but it's grueling. Like, it's like, I mean, if I say something like, oh, I don't let men walk all over me, the fact is what it takes to prevent that from happening, I mean, you practically need your own arsenal of weapons, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it's like, I mean, you know, it's like, it's something like walking around with a loaded gun at all times, but it's not usually a gun, it's whatever carries the same clout as a loaded weapon. And like walking around like that all the time, like, you know, you mess with me and like really, really bad shit's gonna happen. Like that's no picnic, right? Mm. So, I mean, I blame women for not even trying, they usually just Usually they give up at that point, right? They simply, like, if there's going to be an immense power struggle, like a big fucking dirty power struggle, they usually simply give up. And that's the historical problem, right? But, I mean, okay, the, the thing is, the way things have gone, as you said, those problems are going to be solved, okay? But, unfortunately, the new problems are going to be, like, a lot worse. Yeah, well, listen, it's good because women will lead in the new world. Women lead, men protect. Now, Women aren't going to lead fuck all. No, no, in the new world, in 11 days, when the solar flash hits, and you you can see through all the brainwashing of our world, and you can see a galactic... Uh, <laughs> community a family up there with us and you you can accept that and you are in unconditional love and unconditional love and empathy and you you can live in that feeling you will stay here and you will come to the new world where you will get age regressed up to 30 years and you will be given a whole new uh, life and a, a body and you will be worshipped and men will be worshipped and women will lead. Uh, okay, women uh, women okay. lead. They lead. Th their word goes. Their word goes. They have the last word. They always get the last word and that word goes. And well, that that's why in the, the first commandment of the Bible is Thou shalt not worship false gods before me. Okay, and I've even, somewhere I've got written down the Islamic version. Hey, let me find the Islamic version of it, which they wrote on my calendar somewhere. Okay. La ilaha Allah. Ila Allah. Okay, which is basically. There is no one worth worshipping except Allah. God. So all this, like, it's, it's, hero yeah. worship and worship of people, like, that's all banned. Well... Like, there, there will be no worshipping of people. Yeah. In, intelligent... none of that. Intel and the fact yeah. of the matter is what I see, like, everything you're saying is true or truthy. I believe that, but the way it's going to play out 
is suddenly going to be a lot of men deprived and starving from lack of nutrition, lack of proper housing. A lot of men are going to be starving and in a state of deprivation. Yeah, and in that because state, we are completely disenfranchised by this culture has destroyed men. Okay, but, yeah. but, okay, the why of it is a totally separate thing now. The why has been addressed. But the simple reality of a lot of men with no money, no resources, no food, not suitable housing, en masse, okay, I, I'm sure this is now necessary for people to see the light. My problem is the reality that has fallen into place of massive numbers of men deprived and starving, and the women are all standing by them and will will also go into a massive state of starvation and deprivation. I don't think that was the best way for things to go. I mean, I mean, you see the fucking problem yourself. All kind of men with no food and fuck all. Yeah. <laughs> it's, okay? Yeah. And, okay, I had been hoping that the matters would be addressed such that it would not get down to that. That is failure, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure people will start caring for one another and their their minds are going to open up and their thoughts are going to expand but it's all going to be revolving around oh so very many men and old men and the women that stick by them and children all starving with nothing okay that was that that is kind of it's not the absolute worst, but it's like it's pretty close to that range of things, right? So, yeah, people will start healing and their brains will start functioning again. But the problem that they're going to be dealing with is everyone has so many health problems and deprived of so many nutrients and they've been and people, yeah, people are schizophrenic because they don't have the proper nutrients their body needs. But this is all going to occur in a state of, like, people deprived of everything. So I would have preferred that something would have been upheld such that that is not the problem that everyone will be working on to solve. There's... It could have been a little better pro we could going into the future we we should have had better problems and not let things degrade into that. I mean, look at Adam. Like the thing is there's gonna be a lot more people like Adam and sure like I'm sure the means will be there to for everyone to help one another, but come on. I didn't let it get to that point. It's uh, shameful, shameful the way we have okay, but it have doesn't treated. Even matter that it's shameful. The fact of the matter is now somewhere there's some guys and they just they're suddenly looking at a pile of statistics and they're saying, "Okay, people are living on this amount of money in this situation." Clearly, they're not going to have enough money for food or electricity and stuff. Clearly, a lot of them are going to be living in grungy basements because it's the only place that they could afford. Or people are going to be living out, as you said, in trailers and stuff. And people are going to look at this and they're going to say, okay, we need to do something about this. But maybe it shouldn't have been allowed to get so bad, right? I mean, don't forget, look at your situation, but then there's like people 70 and 80 year old men, like 
he's living in these homes and stuff and what like they feed that they, they might not be eating dog food but in order to feed them they're gonna have to give them something equivalent to dog food shouldn't have been allowed to get that bad yeah so like i mean it's like and the thing is it's not just you facing your reality it's now a shared reality amongst a lot of people and come on 20 years ago i think there were better resources and people like everyone was in this massive competition to make it to the top and they were like sacrificing all their resources and benefits simply to be top dog or support someone and being top dog yeah and everything was wasted and now like I mean, they're having trouble even growing crops and stuff. Well, look at my dad. He sacrificed everything for his business. And he could have helped, uh, you know, he could have helped us a little bit. Like, we could have used his help. He's a rich doctor, but he's working on three practices. And... He's only like he's short sighted in that he's only wants to be six like success is number one biz this business building this business and sacrificing everything else um, it, to get this business built you know I want to like I can't help you Horace uh, if you you need a place to live with your debilitating injury <laughs> where half of all homeless people in Canada have a brain injury. And around the world, okay, and, and a world, and he said, he said, I need to build a new wing for my, uh, for my clinic, or something, you know, like, yeah, he has, <laughs> How old is your dad right now? He has three different practices, and one's an urgent. Uh, how kid, old urgent. is he right now? Uh, I think he's like fifty something. Uh, yeah. Well, okay. he's young Come as on, the Horace. Dickens. He's swimming five kilometers a day like okay but okay how old are you you're like what 30 38 uh 36 today actually today's your birthday yeah it is <laughs> oh so you see okay <laughs> well you should have called up like in the old days like uh it's always it's my birthday. I'm oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that gets People everyone excited, eh? When, you, when you do that. Celebrate my birthday. It's just like instant and party starter, eh? It's my birthday, everybody. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, you got a van. There's like 15 <laughs> people in it, but you're yelling out the van. Hey, it's my birthday. Oh, man, we're all heading somewhere. Yeah. Celebrate my birthday. Yeah. But today is your birthday? Yeah. And you're... December okay. Uh, 27th. Okay, so your dad didn't have you when he was 20 years old, did he? Yeah, I think he did, yeah. He was 22. Oh, so he started having children, like, quite young? Well, no, I'm 36 today. So if he had you when he was 20, uh, that would make him 56 years old. Yes, well, I think it, um, I think... Yeah, he had me when he was 22, and my mom was like 30, almost. So he's 58. Okay, so uh, the fact I'm, of the matter is at 58, he's got to start I'm, being worried about his own health. He's swimming five kilometers a day. Like, he's, he's well, like not going to die. He, he's been vaccinated, okay. too. He got vac and he vax I, hopefully... He fucking, I don't know. I've been telling my dad what's going to happen. I told him that, well, like, okay. uh, a lot of these, the jabs were bad, but most of them got switched up and that the military is, like, kind of, like, in charge now. And he's he's going to have to go to a FEMA camp, actually, for friggin' uh, tribunals. And, but he's, no one's going to be, like, no one's going to be killed there, but uh, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be like, okay. They're the gonna thing is, they're I've, gonna get the, the living piss scared out of them because they got the guillotines up there, hundred one thousand freshly new ordered by Obama. 
because he wanted to get people into these camps and chop their heads off. Brand new. The thing yeah. is, Boris, yeah. I've been sitting back here and I've been thinking, like, okay, Gabor's saying various things. And I realized, and I thought, what do I need? And then I thought, I need to somehow find a big bag of that Russian bear bulk up food with human growth hormones. Oh, so I, I thought. Start I, thinking I, that yeah. again. So I thought to myself, all I need to do is get super pumped up with all these um, things, and I'll be working like 12 hours a day. <laughs> but the, and, okay, I'm sure that could happen, but in the balance of things, I am 67 years old. So even though your dad is 58, and he's swimming five kilometers a day or whatever, the fact of the matter, he's probably kind of beeping himself up, and he can't erase the fact that by the time he hits 62 or 63, like, he'll, he'll have his own issues, right? So, I mean, that's just going to happen. Hmm. So, I mean, you know, maybe when he says stuff like, oh, I need to put another wing on the clinic, maybe he's actually saying, like, I need to live for another 15 years. I can't afford to die because I have three young kids and blah, blah, blah. I need to, right? like, build like, for... I need to build something. He's strong yeah. to maintain... He, yeah, he's just concentrated on building something, you know, like... Because in, in the entire thing with Gabor, at one point I was talking to someone, they said, I don't know, they said... They said my dad was a doctor, and he was 65 years old, and he was having, like, some pains. And he was a doctor actively, at that point, working in a hospital. And all the doctors and nurses there, there said, like, well, just go home and rest. And then within 15 minutes, he was dead in his house. And when was this? Okay, this is just some story. Oh, that you heard that like one yesterday? of these healthcare people or whatever told me. Yeah. About their dad. Yeah. That he was a doctor, sixty-five years old. He was actually working in the hospital on that particular day. He started not feeling well, and he said, "I'm not feeling well," and everyone kind of said, "Okay, just take the day off, go yeah. home, and rest." Yeah. That was the advice he got in the hospital from his co-workers. And he got home and he was dead within 15 minutes. So. Yeah, well, you know that it's true that people have been dropping uh, at a higher rate now because of the bioweapon vaccine. Well, and the per I forget who said that to me, but yeah. their approach was like, Hey, my dad was a doctor. He spent his life helping other people. How come at the time he needed help? He was just told to go home. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, everyone probably is somewhat trapped in their own situation, which on the one hand is really super cool. It's really going everywhere all the time. On the other hand, it's also like there's some risk, right? And and you, you know, he's probably in more risk than you in some ways, simply because of everything. Oh yeah, blah blah, blah or whatever. But he is a fucking badass. He's a fucking warrior, my dad. He's fucking like strong as fuck. He's like been through a lot. He left home. He was like he was 15. He left home and he built a massive log cabin in the woods with his friend and used horses to pull the logs. And they made a big giant log cabin. He lived there for half a year. And then uh, they're getting sick from the mouse poo there. So he left and he went off to agricultural college for two years at Kempville College. And after that, he start, went to carpentry and he became a carpenter and he had his own business doing kitchens. And he was working also with metal. And then he became a paramedic. He trained for 
he went back to high school because he didn't want to do all the carpentering and said, it's too much for my body. I'm going to use my brain. He went back to high school. He got straight A's. He realized he was really smart. He got his paramedic degree. And then he said, fuck it, let's go to med school. So he did that. And he was done in like eight, 10 years, finished his residency. And then he worked in ER for like 25, 20 years or something. He was working in ER and he was a like a surgeon, emergency surgeon working in, in the ER. He, he was uh, head of the ER in uh, Bancroft General Hospital uh, for 10 years. And uh, he just worked. He worked every day. Like he worked. He got out and he fucking like fucking worked. Like he put in a big days like and yeah, then he built his businesses and now he's in Phoenix and he's like doing his, his even, he got more, you know, and, uh, he's still okay, working right. every single day. He doesn't take a day off. He's working every day. He's got seven kids and he's out there swimming five kilometers a day, like working his butt off in the burning hot, like, it's like, it's like 140. Fahrenheit down there, Phoenix. Okay, but you started your story with he's a warrior. Yeah, he is. He's a fucking war pig. He's a fucking big boy. And he fucked up. If he gave out those fucking jabs, yeah, he kind of fucked up doing that. But, you know, like, he's he's gonna fucking, he's gonna know. Eventually, he's gonna understand what, what it all meant, so... He's just okay, but you said he's a warrior, and then what this brought to mind to me was, I remember hearing this kind of legendary story about some German guy during the Second World War, and they put him behind a massive gun, and on the D-Day thing or something, I don't know, he killed like 50,000 Allied troops over some period of time, but... Okay, but the fact of the matter is, sure, the guy could do that, but it's going to be one bullet hitting him. It doesn't matter if you kill 50,000 guys if there's, like, one bullet with your name on it, right? So the entire warrior thing is, like, I give it some thought. It's like, yeah, I could be super powerful myself, and blah, blah, blah. But the bottom line is, like, if they hit you once, that might be it for you, right? You know, so that's why I'm trying to carefully kind of bypass the entire <laughs> warrior thing. Because eventually, like, the odds will go against you, right? Not if you stick I mean, together. Live, uh, not not if you stick together, oh, like, and not if you have an impossibly impossible vantage. If if you have a fucking good vantage, and if you have everyone on the same page, everyone understanding that there's a threat, everyone stick together, everyone pump each other up, elevate each other, and never stop fighting for a better vantage. It's all about vantage. That's but it. it still doesn't erase the live by the sword, die by the sword. Well, right? fuck, yeah. An eye for, I mean, an, an, eye for like, an eye, man. Yeah, an eye for an eye. Right, but then the point is some people become surgeons. It's like, well, maybe I could use a sword to make tiny cuts in someone's head and cure them of some disease and they'll survive. So that's more like peace, right? That's more like making peace rather than making war. If you turn your sword into a really tiny little instrument that actually saves people's lives, then you, you turn it all around, right? I mean, I don't want to get... Okay, I mean, maybe it's rather selfish of well, me, but no, I don't no. want to dedicated. Get... It's dedicated healers that are healing the entire world right now. And these little... These little blue men, the Arcturians, are the best healers in the universe. They can heal people with their hands and their minds and their hearts. And they are 100% in full service and fully devoted to source. 
which is okay. God, which is God. Whatever. Great. Yeah. Now, but back to the warrior thing, it's like, I mean, technically you're allowed to kill people in self-defense, right? Yeah. Like, technically you're allowed to do that. If someone's coming at you and they're going to kill you, yeah, you're allowed to kill them. But even that makes me really queasy, like... No, no. I'd rather it, devote myself to trying to yeah. not be in a place where I'm going to have to defend my survival, right? Yeah. Unfortunately, like, that's the world. A... Unfortunately, that's the world. There are threats, and they're not going to get better with rehabilitation unless unless they're totally going to do that, and we would have to, like, fucking, like, you know, flex our muscles and we'd be so enormous and we'd be like, listen, you go to rehab or we're going to annihilate your entire race up the fucking face of this universe right now. <laughs> and then they have to go to right. rehab and they try and be better. But we have to watch them the entire time with cameras and watch their every move to see they're actually not going to revert back into their old ways of murder and of rape. The thing is, I would rather hide from all those things oh yeah you'll get the chance you're you're just gonna have a nice big long holiday and i told my mom most people will go to second earth in about 11 days which is like 30 seconds away and we can people who stay here with the unconditional love and the empathy we can go and we can visit people our friends and family and i told my mom if you do end up on second earth i said mom you're gonna get longer lifespan you'll get free energy you'll get the med beds and make sure that you because they're gonna give you a house and i said make sure you pick a nice place for the house like the bahamas <laughs> i said you better get a place in the bahamas so when i come and visit you and the kitties that uh it would be nice and toasty and I said, I'm going to be really busy, though, because I'm going to be starting a kid's camp here. I'm going to be starting a gigantic, like, massive, massive kid's camp. And it's going to be so incredible. And I'm also going to be joining Space Force and Ocean Force. I, I, I think you missed my point, Space Horace. Space Force is military. It's the galactic military. And I will be joining the military. <laughs> okay, I, I think you missed my point. Like you perceived hiding to be some kind of you, you have to time. stand up. You have to stand up. You cannot hide. You have to stand up, and you have to be responsible, and you have to be a fully grown okay, but... adult. You have to. That's what this whole thing's about: is stepping but, okay. into your role, Horace. In a leadership sense, yeah. okay, the time to stand up is you run and hide, and then when they find, start to find you, then you stand up, and then you run away to find a new hiding place. And oddly enough, you do a lot of standing up because it gets to the point they start finding every time you look for a new hiding place, they eventually find you more and more quickly. It, that's why everyone has to be contained in the one big giant dome, and everyone in the dome, everyone stand up together, and we stay no, no, standing no. up together, and we never no, go back no, to our no, knees. No, no, in a leadership sense, I'm trying to help instruct people that. Finding a hiding place isn't this comfy, cozy thing where you hide with your comforter. It's like it's an ongoing thing because they will find you. Then you have to stand up. Yeah. Then you have to run away and find a new hiding place. Yeah. And it's quite exhausting. Yeah. It's not this comfy, laid back kind <laughs> of, oh, I'm just going to hide here and ride this out. No, they find you. So it's like, yeah. God's so there's, out yeah, and, oh, yeah. They're, they're getting closer. So, they're gonna spot yeah. me. Gotta jump up, and so, yeah. it's risky. And yeah. then I gotta like run away, yeah. find a yeah. new place where they can't. Yeah. And that's my leadership. Is like, if you think you could run and hide, 
You can, but they'll find you, so you got to keep running and hiding. And that's my stand. It's like, don't let them find you. Stand up, run away. It's, it's risky. They might spot you, but outrun them, find a new hiding place. Well, and listen, that's that's how that's how you, off. yeah, and thank God that like you know that's that's why you are here. That's why you're here. You were born for this moment. That's going to be happening. Born to run, yes. For, for the big, <laughs> big giant, big for the big, big, uh, gr big giant, big, big solar flash. That's going to happen and everyone's going to be healed and everyone's going to be like, yeah, roses. Like it's going to, and there's just one, one more thing I want to say. I want to say that everyone here, everyone, every single person has a destiny. We have a destiny, like as a race, we have a destiny as a race and each person has their own personal, you know, destiny and everyone has different skills and stuff. And all that, you know, like some people are excellent engineers and thinkers and, and problem solvers, you know, and all that. But this is what it is. We have our, yeah, own, we, no, no, I we have our destiny, but it's just about filling that destiny the best you can, like every day, like just filling it and, wor and working and just, you know. Okay, so I, I, I just like to give you a piece of information that you might not have. Like, so everyone keep, keep really, going. really dislikes me a lot. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Maybe you don't know this. Maybe you only think that certain people dislike me. <laughs> or the people who most intensely dislike me. Maybe you're aware of. But the fact of the matter is everyone dislikes me very much. So you, you, mean, you mean you mean you mean the Canadian the Canadian establishment and the government and everything? No, I'm just saying if you took any random person and I just spent an hour with them, within five minutes they would start to immediately dislike me. Yeah. Oh yeah, and it would only intensify for the duration of time. So just take it as a given. People don't like me very much. So there are places in, like, your organizations that are willing to take on people who anyone even remotely likes, right? But, like, I don't fit in that. I don't fit that. It's like there is nothing about me that the general person would perceive as likable in any way. So there's really no place for me within that. Like, I, I think there's places for you and Levon and Adam and Gabor and stuff within that, but there's no place for me there. Hey, hey, listen, listen. Like, uh, women have been held back by this world. We've been st they've been stomped all over and yes. we should feel ashamed of ourselves for uh holding them back for their f for two things for their flame for their flame and for their leadership because women have like the biggest flame on earth women and leadership capacity and and okay. but also we should also feel ashamed of how we've treated each other like between the sexes and we should feel ashamed for how we treated men as well okay but, Once I was but mostly Once women I was but mostly women because women are the leaders they are they lead in the new world women lead and their word goes the only thing that's respected more are children and animals those are number one. Once the children and animals are okay, then the adults can, you know, maybe find us the soulmate because everyone has a soulmate, Linda, and you will find your soulmate. If you stay in unconditional love, you accept the world for all its brainwashing. You can see the brainwashing of this world 
You accept a galactic community. You say you there's a family out there. It's Blue Water. Oh, it's Blue Water. Blue Water family. Horace? Horace? Yeah, you're gonna find your soulmate. Yeah. Uh, no problem. Uh, I know it on this planet. Um, yeah, you're gonna. Everyone who. Horace? Yeah. I was talking to you, but then I got an incoming call from Levon, and. So I have to, I call them about Gabor's various things, and so I'm going to talk to him right now because I need to tell him about the thing I was telling you about Gabor's nose thing. Trying to get some support for Gabor on his thing with his head. So tell um, tell I Levon. Talk to, yeah, tell Levon. I can talk to you later today, okay. but I really got to talk to Levon okay. right now. Okay. Okay. Because he phoned while I was talking to you. Okay. Okay? Um, yeah, yeah, tell Levon that uh, it's going to be healed. Everyone's going to be healed in 11 days. And Gabor is going to be, uh, he'll be, he'll be able to speak and he'll be normal. He'll be like walking and he'll, he'll be talking. And he'll probably be walking too. And Adam's going to get his leg back. Huh. Okay, well, I will <laughs> tell him that. And, um... Okay, well, okay. you have my telephone number. Okay. okay. <laughs>